evalúa for the citizens evaluation. I'm going to do my presentation in English. We rehearse it that way. We feel it's very important to connect to a wider audience in this important topic. I am honored to be here. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Eric, Andrew, Seely, for this invitation. I was very honored to, to share this day with Areli Gomez. Areli Gomez was a very important actor uh, in the judicial reform in Mexico. It was her, as a senator, who lobbied and, 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 and uh, built all the political will around the Código Nacional de Procedimientos Penales, which is a unified code of procedure, criminal code of procedure. And, and she was amazing. As civil society, we were struggling. We had achieved the constitutional amendment. But, as David Sherb was saying, everyone was dragging their feet around the judicial reform. And it was her who listened to us and found this way, this different alternative, that instead of pushing states are at their, and their legislators, we would do this national code of procedure. And it was key, as SIDAC has noticed, that after the, the code was approved, it catalyzed the, the whole implementation. So it was, an amazing process, especially because she sat with academics, civil society, uh, politicians, judges, and practitioners in a one year and a half period of discussion for this code. So I'm very grateful uh, to her, and I, I hope she, she keeps on being a champion for this judicial reform. I'm going to start by the end. The end by the conclusions. In a nutshell, in one minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set out what have we achieved and what are the main obstacles. In terms of judicial reform, I think that we did it. I mean, it, it's observable. It happened. Even last June, last month, I was a skeptic. Like, is this really going to happen? I think at the last minute we're going to have um, a reform to the, to the transitory and the constitution so we have more time. But no, there was a political will that is very clear and there are, are observable changes. But where ha have we changed? I think we've only changed at the micro level in uh, dealing with the bulk of cases more efficiently. Let me say it this way. One of the problems that we had was that the criminal justice system in Mexico was devoted only to process minor crimes. But these crimes were processed violating human rights by torturing, by no, not collecting evidence, but by mistreating victims and defendants. Well, the judicial reform up to now and the, the data that we've gathered is that we are processing these cases much better, less costly, more efficiently, but also with dignity and with respect to human rights. So those 75% of cases that was a, the, the, the main uh, workload for the criminal justice system is being processed very differently. This is the observable change. However, we haven't been able to process complex crime, violent crime, organized crime in a better way. There was this expectation, a little bit naive, that if we dealt better and more easily or rapidly with the minor cases, we would devote the time to the important cases, and that's, that hasn't been the case. Mm. So this is one of the challenges ahead. Another challenge is that we've only, we dealt with the reform from top to bottom. It's like, okay, oral trials, adversarial system, and and we devoted the whole code of procedure for oral hearings, but we never touched the police. And this is the basis. And as Maria was saying as well, procuradurias, the prosecutor's office. So there's a management reform pending at the police level and at the prosecutor level. Um, so 
this uh, police reform is probably well I'll touch again this point at the end of of Leslie's presentation we're going to show you uh, the system that we've developed in Mexico Avalua about how to measure the quality of justice in Mexico. We're going to start with a one minute video. If you're going to help me put on. And after Leslie's presentation, I'll just wrap up with the same ideas, showing how the data, I think, supports. Justicia, la medida es una forma de ciudad. Justicia a la medida es una forma ciudadana de evaluar la justicia penal. Proponemos calificar nuestro sistema de justicia a partir de la confianza que nos inspira, de los homicidios que evita, también por las denuncias que logra recibir, por la forma en que tratan a las víctimas. Calificamos también si protegen a los inocentes, si ofrecen un proceso justo y si logran que la cárcel sea digna y segura. Por ejemplo, Calificamos a los ministerios públicos por la forma en que tratan a las víctimas de un delito y encontramos que Chihuahua, Sinaloa, Baja California y Nuevo León son los estados que mejor tratan a las víctimas que denuncian. Pero no todos los estados tratan bien a las víctimas y esto no es justo. Las víctimas de delitos tienen derecho a ser tratadas con compasión y respeto. México Evalúa calificará a las autoridades de tu estado cada año porque tienes derecho a una mejor justicia. Si quieres saber más, visítanos. Hi, <coughs> thank you. So, um, as Lada just mentioned and as uh, we just saw in the video, we wanted to measure the quality of the criminal justice system in Mexico. And we came up with seven indicators. I want to say that we cannot talk about a successful implementation of a criminal reform if we don't guarantee the rights of both victims and defendants at all times. That is the core of our project. We want to measure the quality of the criminal justice system through the experience of its users. In this way, from the victim's point of view, we consider three indicators. First, homicide rates, then the percentage of crimes uh, reported, and third, a fair treatment of victims. So, homicide rates are, are normally used as a measure of violence, and this is true, but it is also a measure of rule of law. A <coughs> state with rule of law will build its institutions and a foundations of peace. Uh, as you probably already know, in Mexico we had a pike of violence in 2011, and homicide rates went up to 23.5 per 100,000 inhabitants, uh, down from 8.1 in 2007, so that was a really big jump in very few years. This was especially worrisome in a handful of states, uh, for example, Chihuahua in the north, in the border, where the murder rate went up to 180 in 2010. So that's, you know, that's a lot. <laughs> um, as, we can, well, as we can see, we've come down from that rate uh, since 2011, but we're still not in the levels that we had in 2007. The second indicator refers to the percentage of crimes reported. When citizens decide to report a crime to the authorities, it means they trust them and that they have an expectation of an answer. We believe that a higher percentage of crimes reported means authorities can have more information on crime and can do a better job. Uh, as we can see, there is a great difference between states in the percentage of crimes they report. Here we're taking into consideration not only uh, not only formal complaints done at the prosecutor's office, but any call for help in the police or in institutions. And we can see that in Baja California, which is also in the north and the border, uh, people report three times more crime than in Guerrero. Um, you can consult all the details of our study on our study, which is online. Right now it's only available in Spanish, but we will soon have it translated. Next, uh, we have a fair treatment of victims. Um, this is very, this is one of my favorite indicators. And well, according to the victimization survey done by INEGI, which is the National Institute for Statistics in Mexico, half of the people who go to the prosecutor's office to report a crime feel they got a fair treatment. Um, again, there are a lot of differences. So in Chihuahua, 78.4% felt they had got a good treatment, whereas in the state of Mexico and Mexico City, it's about 40%. So there's, um, th that's a lot of difference. We can learn 
from the good experiences and we can learn from what these states with a higher percentage of fairness uh, in the treatment to victims have done. Um, well, victims have the right to be treated with respect and compassion and to obtain proper assistance during legal procedures. So it's very important to take th this into consideration. Now, from the defendant's point of view, we want to measure several aspects of a due process of law. Uh, for example, presumption of innocence in a fair criminal procedure. Um, there is currently no data available to measure this from the defendant's point of view, but we were very lucky to participate in the discussions around the national prison law, which in Spanish would be the Ley Nacional de Ejecución Penal. Um, and where he in, in that discussion, we advanced the idea for a more complete system of criminal statistics, which includes the creation of a national inmate survey, which will be conducted by the same INEGI, and that will allow us to measure the experience of people who are accused of a crime as they transit through the justice system. So we will soon have the data. We also measured the fairness of prisons. Prisons should be organized on the basis of respect for human rights for all persons with private liberty, and they should also assure conditions of safety and governance. We used the evaluation uh, done by the National Commission on Human Rights, and as you can see, at a national level, we get a 6.2 on a scale from 0 to 10, so there's still a lot of, a lot of work to be done. And however, there are a lot of differences. So in states like Aguascalientes and Guanajuato, we have a, an evaluation close to an eight, whereas in Quintana Roo and Nayarit, it's around four. So there's a lot of problems there. Um, we are hopeful that the, with the correct implementation of the national, law, uh, national prison law, which was recently approved by Congress, these conditions will get better. Now, I wanna say that Miguel Sarre, here present at the table, was one of the major drivers of this initiative, and I deeply admire him because of that. So whenever we see that prisons in Mexico have better conditions, we can remember that. Finally, I want to talk very fastly about trust. Trust in the criminal justice system is very important because it builds legitimacy, and that results in public compliance with the law. We see that in Yucatan, uh, people tend to trust in the institutions, but in the state of Mexico and Mexico City, there's a general sense of distrust. At a national level, there's more people who don't trust in the institutions than people who have confidence in them. We learned that distrust is directly proportional to a perception of corruption, which means that if we want to improve the levels of trust, we must tackle corruption, and this is what Laeda is going to talk about. Thank you. In my last minute, I would like to say that um, this finding about we are not going to perceive a better justice system if we don't perceive an honest police. And I think this is an immediate challenge for Mexico. Now that I'm involved in the discussions around police reform, what I see is that the president did submit an amendment and, and uh, legal reform about the police, but they have the amendment but no idea on how what is the, the institutional design for the police? And so they are not addressing um, the real issue, and this is one of the most important things if we want to consolidate the implementation of the judicial reform in Mexico. As you've seen uh, in, in the data that Leslie showed, that we have variants that is good. We have states that are doing well, or better at least, and let me summarize it in this way with the data and my personal uh, knowledge on the states. The winners are in the north, Chihuahua, Nuevo Leon, and Baja California. In, el s in the center of the country, in El Centro, Guanajuato, Querétaro, and Aguascalientes. And in the south, Yucatan. This, is, this gives us hope things are happening, and they're not happening from the center. Actually, Mexico City, Estado de Mexico, they are systematically at the bottom. So what we have to do in terms of consolidation is use their management reform, and these, all these states have done their, their, their work from, from the bottom to the top, and with a an very ambitious management reform, as well as the legal reform. So I, I believe that one of the venues internally for Mexico is to learn from ourselves, not only 
imitating or implementing things that are from abroad, but also from the good experiences that we've had. And I think that I will end with this hopeful note. <laughs>